Hello guys and welcome to the first episode of Symphony Shows. Today I'm going to be showing you a little indie game called Thomas Was Alone. Now as all professionals do, they've got to show you all the settings. So, um, first thing is all the controls and the resolution are done by an external thing which you do before you load up the game. The other is uh, done and it's all uh, mouse, there's no, uh, all sorry, keyboard, there's no mouse, but in the options there's only volume. So, yeah. Um, then you have a resume, I've done quite a bit, um, and a new game, and a scenario. Setting, uh, select, sorry, which is you can select these scenes. There you go. I think there's ten levels per scene. And I've done all the way up to here. Um, then you have the credits, which so we'll just watch the credits. There you go. Um, there's a few people. And the best thing is, is the narrator. Anyway, oh my gosh, it's changed colour. Um, now what I'm this game is basically you're a cube. And you control cubes, and it's a puzzle game. It's a platforming puzzle game sort of thing. So it's an odd genre, but we'll go with it. Now I'm going to start a new game, and we're going to go for right from the start. And it has quotes going out throughout the whole thing. Thomas was alone. Wow. A weird first thought to have. You see? This is a odd uh, sort of thing, because you're a cube, but you have feelings? What's that? So, it's narrated by somebody, or whatever his name was, Dan or something, I can't remember. <sighs> Probably because I'm stupid, but um, it brings a sort of amazing thought, a sort of makes you feel attracted or in love with the characters you it I don't know how this game does it it basically makes you feel for a cube it gives cube character which is absolutely amazing so that's all you have to do in the level get to the uh, to the teleporting thingy ball anyway Thomas decided to start listing his observations for posterity. There you go. One, the whole alone thing. Two, portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three, falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. You see, this makes you give the... It gives the, um square blocks character which these days not many games do they sort of miss out the point of the character it's to make the okay, user interesting or Thomas the couldn't fall past this block think damn it think what if there was some kind of inverted fall some way to what's the word jump yeah um, it sort of makes you... what it games worked. do... Thomas had solved the great inverted fall mystery. Yeah, <laughs> most of this is going to be a silent commentary because, well, the narration is absolutely amazing. It's the best feature of this game is what I'm thinking at the moment. But, um, I'm not going to do too much, <laughs> but basically you go buy this game now it's amazing I can't believe you haven't thrown money at it um, what this game does is amazing look at that look at that light wait that's odd I think I just found the light is coming from there okay that's just odd okay Moving on. Um, what I was about to say is um, games. These days they forget what a character is. A character is some way that the user or the player or the person behind 
the game, or the one who's playing it, should be feel attracted, or not attracted, but involved. Like they love the character, or they feel attached to the character. And this game does that perfectly. It jumped, but Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. See? A character is evolving as you play, which, for a cube, is odd, but it works so well. This all seemed a little dangerous. The world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. Run! He was starting to suspect it might even be doing so on purpose. Nah, paranoia. Amazing nar narration. Just goes so well. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might or might not be important. The writing is superb. It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. Oh, it as I designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? No. Too obvious. Uh, I forgot to mention at the start that there will be spoilers, but this isn't a massive story. This is just... It's just... Um, let's just say it's an amazing development of character and characters. Yes, there is more than just one character. I will get onto that in a second. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made another mental note. Four, water. Not good to be avoided. <laughs> and it has little humour like that. And this is about, I don't know, a couple of minutes after he's been born. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. You see, this is where um, the actual uh, parkour, no, not parkour, uh, platforming comes in. There is actual platforming and puzzle later on where you have to work with more than one character to get somewhere. Here we go. Thomas had a new theory. The world was training him. He could feel himself getting smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, He'd become a pretty skilled jumper. Yes, he a warm, was cozy evolving. thing. No, I died. He just wished he had someone to share it with. This game, as the character is developing, it doesn't want him to die, so it's spontaneously respawning him. This is my annoying part, because it sort of fails at jumping. Oh, you see? And then you get stuck in this sort of part. Anyway, yeah, um, this game makes the character perfect. If every game ever made could do this, I wouldn't need multiplayer. I wouldn't need to make up my own character. I wouldn't need anything. But this does it perfectly. The creation of a character. Oh... There you go. That was the first chapter. But here Chris we are. took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Now. 
you have to use, just like that, you have to use the other character, or other characters, or other squares, and blocks. Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Uh, you have to use well, other not blocks. Actually, not technically graceful, it's probably, probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. There was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. You had to use other blocks to help you get round. Oh, sneaky. Oh, he's trying to, he's trying to trick me again. There you are. See, that's all you've got to do. It's very easy platforming skills. But it gets a lot harder later on. Okay. This was more like it. A glowy white thing. Only Chris could get to it. Which, of course, made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? This is where it gets repetitive. This is one thing, the only bad thing I have about the game. So we have to keep on doing Grace, something like Grace. this. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously. This made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worth Oh, worthwhile. I went a bit too quickly there. But yeah, that's the only annoying part about this game. Later on it just gets repetitive good? and repetitive. Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined him. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. I think I'll go to the end of this chapter and maybe a couple of the new character which is a long drawn silver so that's not his name but it would be cool if it was um this Chris is where the real puzzle comes in. with pure hatred he seemed so very happy at their situation friends together a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness See some that amazing writing. But it was all the obvious observation oh. that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. <laughs> you see, little comedy, <laughs> little arguments between them. them just wasn't being so good. Only for a few levels. This game is so perfect, but that's one thing. Repetitiveness which comes on in a lot later levels where you repeat the same thing over and over and over again not because you fail, because the game makes you that's one disadvantage to this game the graphic style is uh, okay but it's, it's an odd graphic style but it goes well with the game which is what I like and it's good and it's, and it's very good. Here you go. We've introduced a new character. John knew. He knew that this was his chance. A moment to shine. This was game day. See? Long John Silver, as I said. He's literally Long John Silver. There you go. See, I've done my, I've done all of these levels before, but this would so not do. Good. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? Uh, this is got hasn't got a story. It just builds the characters. Such perfect ways. It gets arguments between them. 
It's it's amazing. John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. See, comedy like that is what time makes it so good. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use. Time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. See, care. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he'd practiced in the mirror all these years. You see, it makes you think about, it makes you care about the characters. It makes you want to play with them. Play with, oh, that sounds wrong. Uh, it makes you want to enjoy them. It makes them like your friends in a way. Because you feel for the characters. You understand what they're talking about. And it gives an interesting feel, and it's a good feel, I would say. It makes you want to feel happy about them. This is going to be the last level though, so don't think of it. Think of it as a happiness. That's not meant to go there, I don't think. <laughs> there you go. So guys, um, this is Thomas Was Alone. Please remember to rate, comment and subscribe. This is a, this is um, Symphony Shows where I show you games that you should definitely go buy and play. Um, this was the first episode. I hoped you enjoyed. So, for the start of this new series, give it a like. Let's, let's get this to a billion likes, I'm joking. but Let's get this to a lot. And I want this to go well. I want this series to pick up so I can show you good games you should play. So, this is Reese or Jonesy, or Gaming Symphony, saying, have a good day. Bye.